I don't know about you, but I'm starting to feel the squeeze. Let's go explore. Welcome to this episode of Thingifines, where we explore the unexplored universe of the Thingiverse. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at this guy here, this vice. So, um, over the break a little bit, I've been kind of uh, binge-watching some Diode Press, and so I've been very impressed with Graham over at Diode Press and some of the stuff he's done and designs he's come up with, and especially this particular vice, which uh, he took from another YouTuber and uh, actually reworked the Fusion 360 files into something that's 3D printable. So one of the things I did is I jumped over to Thingiverse and uh, actually downloaded the pieces uh, myself, to actually go ahead and, and build them. So one of the things that I did is um, I brought them into Tinkercad because I wanted to kind of take a look at how they all would lay out. Now I want to kind of talk about how I went about this. So I took the two anvil pieces, this piece and this piece, and printed them together on the tarantula. And then what I took is the two vertical rods and printed them together on the wanhao and then these two pieces, the retaining clip and the end for the uh, end rod, which is this guy over here. I also printed those on the one how as separate batches. So three separate runs to actually print this out. Now, one of the things that I did was um, I printed the tall screw in this rod in this orientation. Now, what you may want to do is print this rod instead of this orientation in this orientation for strength. Now the reason I went the other way, however, is I wanted to get some time separation between it printing here and printing something else here to improve the print quality to allow this some extra time to cool down even though I was using a layer cooling fan and that worked out well. However, having the, um, the uh, striations and the plastic layers run horizontally in the same direction the force is going to be placed on this was not the best idea so uh, you may want to just print out two of these or give this some extra time so either way I don't plan to, for this to be heavily used so I wasn't worried about it but just something in case you do plan. Uh, the anvil pieces came out great it was about an 11 hour, 11 hour print and I've got these all these pieces loaded up in Cura 2 also over here so you can see them. So what I what I did is I ran these at 0.2 layer height so I'd get some pretty reasonable layer quality out of them. You could run them at 0.3 but I think you'd lose some resolution. And one of the things, notice in here the threads inside is I wanted to make sure the threads here and the threads here uh, came out well so that's why I stuck with 0.2. Now I did it with two shell thickness. Um, it, depending on how you plan on finishing this, if you're going to really uh, sand on this, which you could make it really nice and paint it. Uh, I would suggest going with three. If you don't plan on that, plan on uh, two is just fine. Uh, I did go with, uh, not the infill here, I had actually upped that to 30% uh, in the actual model. 30% uh, I think came out pretty good. You could probably actually go 40% and make it a bit more solid. And a little bit of that comes in play, especially for these center sections inside here, because this is kind of self-supporting uh, in connection to the back. So uh, with more supports, it gives it a little bit more support here for this, which runs inside of this too. But we'll take a look at all that when we go to the bench. So I tell you what, let's... Um, Hop over to the bench. Uh, we'll see it all printed out. We'll go ahead and assemble it, and I'll give you my thoughts on it as we watch some time lapses in the upper corner. So, okay, so we're back. We've had we printed these out uh, up in the corner. I'll put some time lapses. So what we have here, and I want to talk a little bit about this because if you go ahead and print this out, um, you know, expect to invest about an hour or two in part cleanup. So. Uh, a couple pieces I want to talk about because I have to be honest, this is my second attempt at building this. My first attempt went horribly wrong. What happened is these two pieces got locked together because I got the bright idea I could cram them together then pull them apart. Well, it went in and it didn't come apart. Well, it came apart but like this and not supposed to. So one of the things expect to do is to have to sand this to fit. So uh, this took quite a bit of sanding 
And what you want to do is, is continue to sand it so it slides like this. So this is nice, pretty butter, butter smooth. Because one of the things that happens is because of the design and the plastic expansion, as it comes back, this tube tightens. And, and so uh, I actually had to sand it a little bit more here than I did up here to kind of get the fit. Uh, the other thing I had to do is take a file and go inside here and really clean this up from the support materials. Um, and then I took um, a hand grinder with a Scotch-Brite disc, and that's where a little bit of this discoloration came from, uh, was the Scotch-Brite disc, uh, the color coming off on the yellow. And then after I sanded on this for a while, it took me about an hour of sanding to really get the fit where I wanted it including the lead screw I took and I hit it real quick with a heat gun just to kind of solidify everything again uh, from the sanding now the one thing I will say is if you want to invest about four to six hours in sanding you could really make this nice um, you know Graham's did, done a nice job off the uh, Fusion 360 files that he uh, designed this off of so this could clean up very nice um, I took, I took a little bit of time to do some of the striations here and everything, but you could also paint this. I think, again, um, you know, from a practical standpoint, will it hold a circuit board or something? Yeah, sure. Uh, but this would be a neat kind of like gift idea. I'm bleeding. Um, this would be a neat gift idea um, for someone, too, you know, for a machinist or somebody that's just into shop working or a maker. But let's go ahead and put this together because the other piece that we need to do to put this together is we also printed out the, this rod. Now, again, I cleaned up the rod with the Scotch Bright disc and hit it with a, a bit of uh, heat too to just kind of resolidify this. This is all PLA. Uh, the, the main body, the yellow, was printed on the tarantula and the black was printed on the uh, Wanhao. So this screws in. You notice how easy this is screwing in. And so this goes in, and then what happens is you take this retaining clip. Now, I had to take a grinder and really clean this until I got it to a nice, nice, uh, you know, nice fit. Because you don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight. And then what you'll do is you'll take some number threes. Now, I've already ran these in here once off camera. And so uh, they kind of self-tap. Again, Graham's did a fantastic job with sizing for 3D printing. And again, these will just screw in, take an Allen wrench, and screw these in until they just snug up. They it won't get really tight, um, just because, you know, they're not threaded. They're just kind of like self-threaded. And do the other one. Okay, so that's in there. So what this does is this now retains the this screw with regards to this end anvil. Not sure what you call it in vice terms. And then you slide this in. And then you turn this rather hard. And if you do this a few times, I haven't gotten it to this part. You know, it eventually wear in. There we go. So we're moving it. Now the only other thing that I need to do is it comes with this end cap that needs to be um super glued or crazy glued in so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick now again i sanded this a little bit too and uh just let that set up a minute and we're done so uh voila one Diode press vise. I'm very impressed with this. Um, again, the, the yellow piece was the longest print time, and I really wanted to challenge the tarantula. That was about 11 hours. The rest of it was about an hour to print. Um, I wish the, the, the hand rod would have come out a little bit better. I may actually do up a, another one. I tried sanding it a little bit. I've got, you know, too many striations, because I did these at a point... Uh, I printed this along with this rod because one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to give the rod cool down time. So I wanted to go and do the rod, do the big rod, then the little rod, and, and at least up to a point. Uh, 
to keep adhesion good and without it kind of running out. And that did work, but uh, I ended up printing this at point two, and I wish I did it, would have been able to do it at point three. I may also print this in red for just some nice contrast, so I may go back and, and do that on the uh, uh, Mono Price Mini. But this actually works. You could bolt this down, and this will actually this will actually tighten up on something. So it's tightening up on my finger, and that hurts. Um, so unlike the other Vice project, this one actually works. I don't know why the threads in the other one didn't. The threads on this, um, especially if you look closely at the time lapse, came out very nice. So all in all, this I got to give this print a thumbs up. I give this probably, you know, a five out of five for prints. I can't think of anything that I could think of to do any better. Now there's some some funkiness up here in the model, uh, and I think that's actually in the model. Because now one of the things I did to lay this out, I brought this into Tinkercad first, uh, and that may have been contributed to this situation because I wanted to see if I could uh, modify it for the future because what I'm thinking about if this is practical enough to do uh, some different things with it and to alter the uh, jaws because one of the pieces if I do want to hold the circuit board this is just a flat edge so one of the things I want to be able to possibly do is to build um, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure what they call them. Uh, it's escaping right now. But, you know, uh, clips that go over top of the jaws. So if you notice out in Thingiverse, I have a set for holding coins and that. So what I was thinking about doing is using these, turning these into holes, pressing them into blocks where I've got a fixture already created. And then that way they just slide right on here and possibly print them out of TPU or something like that. I thought that would be cool. Um, I'm also thinking about uh, doing... Um, maybe a cap and a pin out of metal or something uh, just to make it a little bit cooler. Um, I wish the Scott Bright, Scotch Bright disc didn't uh, discolor that yellow there. That's probably a little bit of my fault for using yellow, but I like the looks of it. So, anyways, again, big thumbs up. I give this guy a five out of five. Uh, build is pretty simple. I would say just above novice is fine. Um, now I did print this with two shells. Uh, I think I did 30% infill. If you're going to sand this, I would say go three shells uh, because you'll sand at least one off of it to get rid of all the striations. But if you do that and then you like clear coat this and paint it, it will look super cool. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. To discover more, please be sure to subscribe as well as share with your friends. Also don't forget to leave a comment below if there is a specific corner you would like us to explore.